Hello people, John the Biker here, welcome to the channel. Today you're joining me on another bike review and test ride and this time it's on the 2021 Kawasaki vs 1000. Now I believe this is the, the SE model, so the, the better one of the three. And I've literally just picked this bike up uh, just a few, few minutes ago actually, about five minutes ago. And I'm just nipping along the A92 heading towards Dunfermline. Uh, I'm just going to do a loop around the coastal route uh, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on the bike. So, first impressions um, of the bike is are really, really good. Now, I ride the 650 Versys uh, as, my, as my own bike and I absolutely love that. And what can I say about the 1000 Versys straight off the bat is so much better. Um, not just for the more power, but just everything about it just feels so much better. It feels a lot smoother, more comfortable, uh, and obviously the power does help. Now, uh, straight away, I feel super comfortable on the bike. The, I'm sitting bolt upright, um, the, the seat is very well padded, um, handlebars are nice and wide, the mirrors, um, now I, I think these mirrors are a little bit loose, um, but uh, the mirrors are good, uh, similar to the mirrors on the 650 Versys I guess, maybe not as high, which was one of my complaints about it, was I thought the mirrors were a bit high on the 650, but these mirrors are working really good, no vibrations, in fact there's no vibrations at all through the bike on the pegs or in the handlebars. Uh, this big touring screen is fantastic. Now I was coming along uh, this dual carriageway there and I was doing motorway speeds and I had my visor open and I was getting no wind in my helmet at all. It's, uh, it's really good but obviously I just shut the visor for when I wanted to start recording uh, so you don't get all the wind noise. The, the fairing on this is keeping everything off my legs. Uh, I don't feel any turbulence on me at all. Um, maybe a, a very, very slight bit of turbulence on the my arms. Um, but that's probably just the way because the way I've got my arms positioned on the bike. I said, I'm still trying to get used to it. Uh, I've only been riding it a few minutes. So I'm not going to be doing nothing crazy. So I'm going to stay on this dual carriageway for a little bit and then I'm going to come off probably around about uh, Dalgetty Bay or head down towards Dalgetty Bay and then just follow the coast route um, but I wanted to get a little feel for it on the motorway because obviously a bike like this is designed for touring and you might want to be doing a lot of miles on the, the motorway or dual carriageway so I wanted to give that a little time. I don't ride on the motorway all that often. Um, I just don't find it any fun. Um, I'm not a speed demon, I don't like going too fast. So I prefer the back roads, the twisty roads. Um, but I wanted to just give it a little a little try, see what it was like compared to the other uh, motorcycles that I've ridden on the motorway. And I've got to say, hands down so far, this is probably the best thing I've been on to go on the motorway. Uh, just for the fact that there's no wind on me at all, like that little tiny bit of my elbows and my, the, my arms, but apart from that, there's nothing. So I'll uh, I'll nip along here, and then I'll uh, I'll rejoin you when I'm back on the uh, better roads. Obviously missing something.
So welcome back, and that's me back on to normal roads. This is a nice little twisty road at some parts of it. Go through some nice little villages. So we'll get to feel how the bike handles on the twisties. On the dual carriageway and motorway, perfect. So I'll tell you a little bit about the bike, obviously that's what you're probably watching for. Um, so as the name would suggest, this is a 1000cc bike. Um, well, in actual fact, it's a 1043cc, uh, and it's producing about 108 horsepower. I can't remember the, the torque, newton meter torque, I think it was 104 for some reason, but I could be wrong with that. If I am, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, obviously, your standard six-speed uh, wet multi-disc gearbox, and everything is as smooth as a silk. Um, sorry, the engine's a, an inline four, by the way. Um, so it's nice and smooth, the gearbox is nice and smooth, um, it's really, honestly, it's really nice to, to ride actually. I've not ridden many inline fours, in fact the last one I, I rode was the, the bike that I passed my test on, which was a Honda CB650R, and I, I really like the sound of that engine, and I really like the sound of this one as well. Um, brakes on the bike, so listen, Nissan brakes all round. So on the front we've got twin 300mm discs with the twin piston calipers and on the rear we've got a single 250mm uh, disc with a single piston caliper. Suspension on the bike is fully adjustable um, and it's all controlled by this preload button. Um, if you look at the TFT you can see the little picture of the man on the bottom right hand corner. So obviously one rider. And then if you change it, you can add luggage and two up, two up with luggage, etc. Um, obviously, this bike doesn't have any luggage on it, and I'm only out on my own, so I'm not going to uh, change that. Uh, but I, I did have a little fiddle about with it uh, before I went out to see how it all works. Plenty of power on it when we want to overtake. And if you know my videos, I'm not a, a big fan of the overtaking. Uh, I'm quite happy just to amble along at, um, at a reasonable pace. And then, look, I've come into a 20 zone, so I'm going to have to slow down anyway. So that gives me a chance to tell a little bit more about the bike. So comfort-wise, as I say, it's coming on the motorway. It's super comfortable. Um, I actually think I'm falling in love with this bike, to be honest. Um, super comfortable, nice riding position. Electronics on the bike. So it's, it's got quite a lot of electronics on the bike. Um, more uh, than you might think uh, for the price that you pay for it. Um, I've been on more expensive bikes with less. Now if electronics is, uh, is your thing, then you shouldn't be disappointed with this. So straight away, as I showed you at the start there, um, it's got this nice little uh, TFT monitor. Um, and I think it's a perfect size. Um, it's not going to be, it's not too distracting. It's kind of tucked away there, and it's also got this uh, analog dial along the for the rev counter, which uh, it's kind of similar in the, the the concept as the 650 one. It's just obviously it's a little bit uh, different layout. Uh, but the TFT itself uh, is very clear. It's got everything on it that you need. So gear indicator, your rider mode, uh, clock, uh, speed obviously, fuel gauge, and it's right now it's showing me my lean sensor, my range, and the uh, engine temperature and ambient temperature. Um, bike comes with cruise control, uh, this particular model has the, the heated grips and the, the, the fog lights or the auxiliary lights, but everything is kind of adjustable using a combination of the switch gear on the left and on the right. Um, I'm going to pop it into sports mode just to have a little shot of that once um, I've got some free air in front of me. Um, but the three rider modes that it comes with is road, sport and rain. And I think there's a, actually I think there's a fourth mode that's the, the, the rider mode. So you can adjust it yourself to for traction control and stuff like that. Uh, speaking of traction control, obviously it does have traction control, ABS. 
Um, so yeah, so it's got quite a, a it's got quite good um, electronics package built in here. Also, it's got the uh, LED lights all the way around, and it's even got uh, corner lights, um, which I haven't seen in a motorcycle before. But <coughs> this one's got it. Um, because when I was messing about with the settings, I could turn them off. Why would you buy a bike with corner lights and then turn them off? I don't know. So obviously it's uh, middle of the summer holidays here in Scotland, so hence why the roads are quite packed. Um, I've not got this bike for a great deal of time, so I can't really go to any of the, the roads that I would normally go on. Um, and this is the, the Fife Coastal route, so tourist galore. But at the top of this hill, I'm going to pull over and I'm going to show you uh, around the bike. And then once I've done that, we'll start heading back. <coughs> and uh, we'll pop it into sports mode, see what that's like. And I'll give you my final review, or my final thoughts on the bike. And here it is, the 2020, I think I said 21 earlier on by the way, it's a 2020 Kawasaki versus 1000. Uh, and it's in this really nice Kawasaki green, I really like this. Um, I wasn't too keen on it when I first saw the green, but um, no, up close it's uh, it's absolutely, it's really, really nice. Um, so, start for the front, going our way back. Uh, another mistake I might have made is I said these were Nissan calipers or not, they're just, Kaw they're just branded Kawasaki. Uh, but here's your 300mm discs, uh, both sides, and it looks like it might actually be four pot calipers on the front. Um, and there's the 250mm at the back. Um, unlike the 650 verses, this does have a proper exhaust sticking out, uh, so therefore it can have a centre stand. The electronic adjustable suspension at the back there, uh, tucked inside there, hopefully you can see that. And obviously, like I said, it's got LED lights all the way around. Now, one of the things I wasn't too keen on this bike was the shape of this fairing. Uh, I don't know what it is. There's something about it I don't like. Um, but it's probably because I've added these bits here to accommodate these corner and lights. Um, which, like I said a few minutes ago, I've never seen that on a bike before. What? Well, there you go, Kawasaki done it. So another thing that I mentioned to you was the fact that this bike was designed for touring. Now, as you look at here, it's got this the quick release pannier system, uh, and obviously the the plate for the, for the top box. Now, depending on what model you buy, uh, you might only get the top box, or you can get the model that has the, the called the Grand Tourer uh, that comes with everything. Uh, so top box panniers, and obviously. The, the hand guards and the auxiliary lights at the bottom there. Um, but no, it's a, it's a very, very, very nice bike. Uh, and the comfort, I can't can't comment too much, can't keep comment on the, the comfort of the bike, but it really has to be said that it's probably the comfortablest bike I've ever ridden. Right, so let's get back on and we'll 
do some of these twisty roads. Oh. Oops. And let's pop her into sports mode, see what that's all about. Side stands a wee bit fiddly. Uh, maybe I just need to get used to that. No, I said I'm going to put it on sports mode. Well, I get to use it. The amount of traffic going up and down this road. Now, I had it in road mode before, and already I can feel the difference. Not really ridden bikes with speed. Sorry, I've not really ridden too many bikes with different modes on it, but um, the last one I was on was probably the the Africa Twin, and I couldn't really tell the difference to be honest. Uh, maybe it was just me, just the way I was riding it. It wasn't a particularly nice day that day. Um, not perfect weather like it is today, um, but oh, you can feel it straight away on this. There's just so much power in this engine. It's just there, ready for you. Now this road is, might not look it, but it's actually quite a bumpy road. There's drains and potholes everywhere. Um, but this uh, active suspension, or whatever it is they call it, is working a treat. Now if you watch some of my previous videos, you'll make remember me saying that I don't have the best shoulders and knees. Um, see me get, a, get cramped quite quickly. It was a bit close. Um, but after about half an hour, 45 minutes, that's usually when I start to, start to feel it. It doesn't get sore but I start to feel it. Um, now on my Versys 650, I've been out in that for over two hours before, and then I start to to get a little bit cramped up. This mirror is very loose, I'll need to say to the guys when I go back. Um, but I've been on this now for, I don't know, approximately an hour, um, and I'm not getting anything, honestly. It's just really good. So I'm going to be honest, I was um, completely sold on the Africa Twin, I absolutely loved that bike, um, but I'm, I'm not too sure now. <laughs> this bike, uh, brand new, comes in, I think it starts about 12,500, um, so a little cheaper than the Africa Twin, and it feels so much better. Feels so much better. Um, yeah. Somebody else giving a guided tour to someone in that car. Not actually watching what they're doing. So this is the town of Burnt Island. Now the last time I was through here on the Kawasaki Vulcan, uh, I went down through the high street and it was particularly busy. Um, they've got some sort of fair going on there just now, so I'm going to skip that today and I'm going to go up this other road, which uh, is actually quite a good little road, if I remember right. It's been a while since I've been up here. Uh, most of the tourist traffic will go down the coastal route. This just kind of skips all that. But this engine just doesn't seem to have any problems. And I'm coming along here at 30 mile an hour in fourth gear, and there's no shuddering, there's no, it doesn't sound like it's um, struggling to keep going. And yeah, it's so good. There you go, I'm even in fifth gear, uh, 34 miles an hour, perfect. And then, and the power's right there when you need it. Ah, okay, I just discovered something. I didn't know that, the guy never told me that when I picked it up. 
And it's got a quick shifter on it. Up only. I wondered why it jumped into six gear there. I must have nudged it by a mistake. Well, like I said, this mirror is loose, so the wind's actually pushing it back. Oh yeah, another pleasant surprise, the quick shifter. I was on the Tiger 900 a few months ago. Um, and I, I'm going to be honest, I didn't particularly like the quick shifter on that. I found it a bit clunky. I mean, it worked, but um, on this it just feels so much smoother. I think that's going to be my word for the day on this bike. Smooth. Apparently we need to slow down because there's ducks on the road. I don't even know why I'm pulling that clutch in now to the upshift because I don't need to. I'm only on the ups, never on the downs. Another thing I noticed on this TFT as well, it's got the lean um, meter. I guess that's what you would call it. Uh, so it's telling me how far I'm leaning over as well. That's quite quite a clever system, I guess. Oh, okay, so building houses here. I said I hadn't been here for a long time. Well, I don't actually know if that was altogether necessary, but anyway, it is what it is. So anyway, back to what I was talking about, which I've completely forgotten now, obviously. Okay, so for the last bit of this review, it's just going to be in this little twisty road up here, back into Kirkcaldy itself, um, and then I'll be dropping the bike off, unfortunately. So when I get a little bit closer to Kirkcaldy, I'll, I'll give you my my final thoughts on the bike. Hopefully when I get up to this little twisted road here, the, the road's going to be relatively clear. Um, and we can have a little bit of fun. Oh, looks clear, looks clear. Brakes are super good. Is the white van man turning? Ah, good white van man. And my mirror is totally flopped in now.
Ah, oh, well, at least we got a little bit of twisties to go fast on. And that's us back in Kirkcaldy, so, like I say, it wasn't the best review for all the numbers and stuff, because I didn't know I was going out on this bike today. Uh, but I do hope you enjoyed it. So that's me nearly back at the dealership. Uh, I'd just like to thank Kawasaki Kirkcaldy for allowing me to take the bike out, especially on such short notice. Uh, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've been out in it for a, just over an hour actually. Um, I wish I could go a little bit further on it, but the guys did say that the the bike was booked out um, just before two o'clock. So unfortunately, the bike must go back. But maybe I'll get up again and have another go on it because it's definitely a bike that I'm going to. It's, it's definitely in my my list of bikes to consider. Now, my plan, like I've said before, is to buy a new bike um, probably next year. Uh, maybe maybe the back end of this year, but more likely next year, start of next year. Uh, and so far, I have to say, this is probably the best thing I've been out on. So, the main thing I'm going to say about this, and I've said that more than once, I'm sure, is how smooth it is. You know, it's so comfortable. The power delivery is fantastic, brakes are lovely, and the suspension is just silky smooth. And I think for the price you're paying for it, you're getting a lot of bike for the price. Uh, don't get me wrong, I think when it comes to me buying one, I would go for the the, the GT one the, or the Grand Tourer. With the with the panniers, top box, and extra lights, and etc. Um, uh, so I'll, I think that comes in about thirteen and a half thousand. I could be wrong with that price actually, but uh, I'll put the price up if I'm wrong. But I think for the one that I was considering buying, which was the Africa Twin, I don't know. I used to think it's a better bike. Don't get me wrong, the Africa Twin is lovely. Um, nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that bike. But I think I just prefer this. Maybe this bike's just more suited to me. So, as always, if you've stuck around till the end, I greatly appreciate it. Um, if you liked the video, please hit the like button. Um, any questions, and anything that I might have missed, just drop a comment. I'll do my best to answer it for you. Um, and I'll see you next time. Ride safe, guys.